Christmas. Good evening. I hope you enjoyed our children's choir as they perform Jingle Bells for you tonight. My name is Reverend Shannon Blosser, and I am the pastor here at Pee Ridge United Methodist Church, and I greet you in the hope of Jesus Christ on this Christmas Eve, this Christmas Eve night. I always enjoy a worship service at 11 o'clock at night. It's a chance for us to hear the story in a way that takes us back to that moment some 2,000 years ago when Jesus was born to Mary and Joseph. It's a beautiful night, and I always enjoy just that beauty of walking out of the church and knowing it's Christmas morning. And so tonight, this online service is intended for us as we are at home, perhaps putting together the last of the Christmas gifts, making the final wrappings, or maybe just sitting with a cup of coffee or hot tea and just enjoying the night. It's intended for us just to simply sit back, relax, and reflect on the story of Christ in a relaxed and holy atmosphere. And so as we gather, as we encounter the presence of Christ, in our homes on this night, I invite you to join me in prayer. Most holy and gracious God, Father, Lord, we give you thanks for this night. We give you thanks for this time to worship you as we're simply sitting back and reflecting on the hope of your birth. Help us to hear your story in a new way this day. In Christ we pray. Amen. Well, you've already heard from our children as they have sung Jingle Bells. Well, right now we want to invite you to listen to our chancel choir as they sing Joy to the World.
You know, I really love our chancel choir. They are the epitome of small but mighty. And I am so thankful for them. And it's so great to hear them return and come back to worship as they have been over the last few weeks as we have found some safe ways for them to do so over this Advent season. I'm looking forward to hearing them more in the coming year. So I wanna just say thank you to Alex and the entire choir and Sarah for their blessings and the ways that they help us to give focus and attention upon God and worship. As we gather on this night, I invite you to hear again the words from Luke. We're gonna focus in on just the story of the shepherds tonight. So I want you to hear this word from Luke chapter two, verse eight through 20. Hear these words. That night, there were shepherds staying in the fields nearby, guarding their flocks of sheep. Suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared among them and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them. They were terrified, but the angel reassured them. Don't be afraid, he said. I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David. And you will recognize him by this sign. You will find a baby wrapped snugly in strips of cloth, lying in a manger. Suddenly the angel was joined by a vast host of others, the armies of heaven praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and peace on earth to those whom God has pleased. When the angels had returned to heaven, the shepherds said to each other, let's go to Bethlehem. Let's see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. They hurried to the village and found Mary and Joseph, and there was the baby lying in the manger. After seeing him, the shepherds told everyone what had happened and what the angel had said to them about this child. All who heard the shepherd's story were astonished, but Mary kept all these things in their heart and thought about them often. The shepherds went back to their flocks, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen. It was just as the angel had told them. I invite you to join me in prayer. Most holy and gracious God, Father, Lord, we give you thanks for this night and a chance for us to reflect again on your holy word and this holy story. Grant us your peace and grant us your hope so that we may hear your words anew this night. In Christ we pray, amen. You know, I love looking at the night sky. Every so often when I come home from the night of maybe a meeting or maybe picking up Noah from therapy, I take a look up in the sky and I look to see if I can see the stars. I love to be able just to look up and see stars and their nature and blinking and just imagine the horizons. I've always been fascinated with space and the atmosphere. And there's something beauty about a, a night sky, something beautiful about a night sky. The calmness, the peacefulness, and the beauty of seeing the cosmos and the moon just enlighten the, the whole horizon. And you see things that maybe you miss out on it when the sun is so bright during the day. I kind of wonder on this night, on this Christmas Eve night, if the shepherds were sitting in the fields outside of Bethlehem on that rocky cliff outside of town, if they were just simply looking up in the stars and telling stories. Shepherds were an outcast group of people. They were shunned and tossed aside because they were dirty. They were nomads. They often kind of took from what they could to provide for themselves. And they had no respect for people's property. They went wherever their sheep went. They were dirty. And yet they become an image in the Old and the New Testament of care. David is known as a shepherd, and Jesus himself in John's gospel identifies himself as the great shepherd. He's the good shepherd. What we see is in 
image and a reflection of care and compassion that is manifest in God himself. And so shepherds have always stood as a witness of God and God's care for us, even if we miss out on that part of the story because we look at shepherds as just being dirty and no good. These shepherds shunned to the outside, shunned to the periphery of Bethlehem. Perhaps they were staring at the sky and they saw something miraculous, an angel appear before them. Maybe the same angel that had appeared to Mary and the same angel that had appeared to Joseph in his dream and announced to them that a savior had been born, a Messiah had been born in the city of David, in Bethlehem. These shepherds, these outcasts, these unwanted, dirty people, were the first ones outside of Mary and Joseph's family to hear that the Christ had been born. The first to hear that a Savior had come, the one that God would use to redeem the world because Jesus himself is God. They were the first to hear of the story of a Savior being born. Imagine that. Imagine being shunned. Imagine being tossed aside. And imagine hearing that God has welcomed you so much so that you were the first to hear the pronouncement of a royal birth. That just makes me in awe. As is what, as does what angels say to the shepherds. A great multitude of angels come and pronounce a message of hope. Glory to God in the highest heavens and peace on earth for all whom God is pleased. Peace on earth. One of the great refrains of the Advent and Christmas season, peace on earth, glad tidings for all. Peace is a dominant word in scripture of tranquility, unity, wholeness connection to God. What the angels proclaim to these shepherds is that God is making everyone whole and bringing everyone together and bringing unity and grace and joy to all because of what this Christ child will do. This Christ child the manifestation of God in a broken and hurting world, the representative and the reality of God in human flesh and fully divine has come to bring peace to all. Not just to the rich, not just to the powerful, not just to those who show up for worship every week, but for the ones tossed to the, tossed to the margins, for the ones that feel like life has let them down for the ones who feel just overwhelmed and distracted, the ones who feel hurt and broken or feel a restlessness in their soul. God has come to bring us all together. I think that's one of the great messages of the Christmas story that the Christ has come to bring everyone together in God's love. Christ didn't come for just a few people. Christ didn't come just for those who play the part. God didn't come just for the ones he likes the most. He came for every single person. No matter who you are, no matter where you're from, God loves you enough to come into this world to bring peace and to bring hope. It's a great message of the Christmas story. 
and maybe a message we need in this year. I don't know about you, but I have found myself in this Advent and Christmas season busier and more stressed than normal at Advent or Christmas. Now, Abby will tell you, my wife, that I'm always stressed and I'm always anxious during the Advent and Lent seasons. There's just so much to do and so much on my heart. But I have found myself this particular Advent more stressed. And I think the reason is, is wanting to make up for lost time. Or wanting to make up for a, a very hard and difficult year where many of us are still feeling the strain and the stress and maybe even the hopelessness of the divisions in our world or even just the pandemic itself. I think maybe you feel like that too sometimes. And I wonder if you feel like that sometimes too. If maybe we've just been so busy this year that we're just trying to make up or maybe even distract ourselves from what's going on. But you know, the message of the Christmas story is that Christ has come to bring hope to every person and to bring peace to us all. Not by what we do, not by what we make of it, but by who Christ is. So on this night, on this day, no matter where we find ourselves, maybe it's trying, instead of trying to make this the perfect Christmas, maybe we need to experience what Christmas is all about. That Christ has come to bring peace and hope in every corner of our lives. to bring us all together and to remind us that we're all in this because of God. I don't know about you, but that's a hope I need to claim this Christmas night, that Christ has come to bring peace and bring us all together. Will you pray with me? Most holy and gracious God, Father, Lord, Help us to claim the peace of your Christmas hope this day in our lives together. Help us to hear your peace that has come to bring us all together because you have come. In Christ we pray. Amen. One of the great joys of this night is to listen and hear Silent Night song. And as we conclude this night, as we conclude our time together, I invite you to hear Alex Lee and Emily Clover sing Silent Night for you.
that was a beautiful rendition and beautiful singing and just a, an amazing version of Silent Night. Well, I hope that this has been a beautiful time for you and a time of reflection and hope. I'm so thankful for you to join us, whether it was Christmas Eve night or whether Christmas morning or sometime through the weekend. I'm so thankful for you and to be able to be with you on this Christmas season. And as you celebrate the birth of Christ and the hope of Christ, know that God loves you. Know that God's peace is with you. And know that the hope of God is eternal and with you always. Know that God is peace and joy and love is here for everyone. And go in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen and amen.